Bearstates.com and go with the home team at Mississippi Farm Bureau. One of my favorite college football writers in the country because he is measured, he is not prone to hyperbole, and he loves college football. You can follow him on Twitter at BillBender92, BillBender92 on Twitter. Bill from the Sporting News, hello, my friend. Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year. Thanks for having me on. What a day, Bill, here in uh, in Mississippi. Uh, we spent the entire first hour of the show talking about uh, the announcement earlier today that Quinshawn Judkins is entering the transfer portal. Uh, your reaction to that? I mean, you know, I'm doing those uh, top 25s that everybody does, and, you know, Old Miss would have been a – I think they still are. They're going to be ranked in the top ten. But, I mean, you could start making an argument top five with Judkins based on the portal work that they did. So a little bit of a stunner, for sure. And, you know, a lot of that depends on where he ends up now. Like, how does that change the game for another SEC school? And I'll give you a spoiler alert. I got a lot of SEC teams in this way too early top 25. It'll be interesting to see how they sort that out. Yeah, and and in a year with no divisions coming up and a 12-team playoff, it's uh, it certainly is going to be uh, an interesting season. I, I, I am curious who else, I mean, Usual suspects, I would assume. Alabama will be there. Georgia will be there. Who else? You, you got Missouri in the top ten? Possibly. I'm sorting out the ten right now. I'm, like, weighing some decisions, but they're right on that cusp. I think Ole Miss will be in the top ten. I think Texas will be in the top ten. Remember, they are an SEC school now. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's the other part of this thing that I'm doing. You start to look at the conferences, and you're like, well, yeah, all these teams are good, but – beat up on each other a little bit so you kind of start to wonder okay who's going to beat who um you know very interesting uh thing trying to put those things together i i always get amazed at how wound up people get about it when i write it because i'm like i you know we have no idea yet but it's for the entertainment value although i will say oh my god the, the playoff teams right there and i had texas at number 20 last year and everybody thought it was crazy yeah, well, that uh, that turned out to be a, a pretty nice pick. We we were treated, Bill, to two really entertaining semifinal games over the uh, over the weekend. Uh, first with the Rose Bowl that just drew a massive audience with uh, the Alabama and Michigan game. G- give me a takeaway or two that you had from that game. Alabama, Michigan. They they uh they ah. Uh, all my, yeah, you know, I covered the Big Ten, right? So I've never seen Michigan push Alabama around. And they did up front and for the first quarter, right? And then Alabama adjusted. And then Michigan, uh, J.J. McCarthy made the big plays. Um, game. It was just such a huge game, huge moment for Michigan because I'm accustomed to watching them. You know, what? Did you ever think what would have happened had, what do you think the reaction would have been had Axel, who picked up that punt at the end, Gets nailed, fumbles it out of the end zone. Michigan loses by two. Could you imagine the social media reaction to that? And and you know, Bill, there were so many plays in the game where if you change the outcome of one play, the outcome of that game could have been different. If JJ McCarthy isn't able to reach up and make a one-handed grab on that backward mm-hmm. pass, could have changed the mm-hmm. outcome of the game. Uh, the the fumble you mentioned there. How about the fumble with with Jalen Milrow? If he doesn't. It feels like Alabama's kind of taking control offensively, and then he has that fumble around midfield, and, and then you get the low snap there in overtime. I mean, th- there were so many plays where if you just flip one of them, the outcome could have been different. That was a riveting football game as a result. Uh, you know, and I, I've, so I, I'm sure you guys have talked about it, that last play, the low snap. I've heard so many explanations that could have worked, it should have worked, it was there. Um Really wasn't there, though, because when you had your tackle get pushed into the play and you ran that right at the teeth of Michigan does that well. And I think that's a big thing and a common thread of a lot of these national championship teams is they're strong up the middle. You know, Clemson used to have Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins. Georgia had Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter. Michigan, they might not be as well-known names down in the SEC, but, you know, Mason Graham's a baller. Kenneth Grant can play. Uh, Chris Jenkins will play in the league. All three of those guys will play in the NFL. And uh, you build your defense inside out. That's exactly what Michigan's done. I think they stunned Alabama with their pass rush. 
And to me, Richard, Alabama wasted a half. Yes. Figure out Michigan's pass rush. They couldn't throw the ball down the field, and I think Michigan knew it. Well, and, and five sacks in the first half, and we were talking about this yesterday. You know, why why did it take an entire thirty minutes for Alabama to realize that they either needed to leave a running back in the backfield and not go empty, or add a tight end or an H back or something to help and like give your quarterback a chance? Yeah, they they dialed up some good ones, but to Alabama's credit, they they won the third quarter. They had that game, and they were in position to win. And we would have praised Nick Saban as we always do this time of year. Um, made the plays and I think that comes down to a couple players JJ McCarthy number one um, 26 and one as a starter at Michigan they uh, the phrase I've been using all day and all week really is they continue to win in everybody's face like you know we thought it was over at Penn State we thought it was over at Mich- or Ohio State I-, I picked Ohio State I picked Alabama I live here and I picked them and-, and I should know better because this Michigan team is seemingly feeding off all the the hate the haters and McCarthy's good. And Blake Corum, I mean, what can you say? A, a leader for that team scores the big winning touchdown in overtime. And they're just a really mature football team on the field. We can make whatever judgment we want off it. On the field, that's a darn good team. There was not nearly as much defensive dominance in the uh, in the nightcap, the second game of the semifinals. But I thought the Sugar Bowl was a really fun watch. Um, we knew going in that Washington had multiple receivers that could make big plays. They did that. Their tight end was important. And then Michael Penix was just spectacular. Yeah, I mean, all of those things are true. It was a fun game. We, I figured that would be the more entertaining of the two games, and it certainly was. Um, you know, these teams got up and down. They scored points. Michael Penix was on a heater. Uh, they almost blew the lead. And one thing with them. Uh, you know, they could give Michigan problems. If Penix has time, they, they will. I mean, that with those receivers and the way that they, they make contested catches, that could be a problem for Michigan if they can run the ball on top of it. Dylan Johnson's foot injury, obviously worth watching. Well, that said, I mean, they were one play away from, like, a legendary playoff collapse against yeah, they Texas. Were. And uh, that was the wild part to me. And we can say it was fluky because Dylan Johnson got hurt, but, man, Running into the punter, giving up a deep pass. I really thought Texas was going to win that game. Had four shots at the end zone there at the end and, and couldn't get it done. So that was actually what I was going to ask you. We, we saw what Michigan's defensive front did to Alabama's offensive line. And I feel like we are, what, 14 games into the season with the championship game, all that's left to play. And there's still people that are kind of sleeping on this offensive line from Washington that won the Joe Moore, uh, Joe Moore Award this year, will they be able to protect Michael Penix to the point you raised just a second ago and give him time to try and find those receivers? If not, it will be a blowout. Michigan will blow them out if they can't. And I, I think, I'll put it this way, I don't think Washington can blow Michigan out, but I think the other one could happen. Um I think Washington absolutely could win the game. They've played in eight one-score games. They've won those games. They're mature. Caleb, but their offensive line, I mean, maybe we're undervaluing them a little bit, and I, I probably am. But they couldn't get that running game going against Texas, and Texas had good interior line too. So if they're one-dimensional, they'll be in a little bit of trouble. That said, I've been using a basketball analogy with Michael Penix all day. He was on a, he was a volume shooter that was really hot the other night. If he's hot against Michigan, they can win that game. I mean, it's going to be so fun to see this contrast in styles. But I just – Richard, you remember back in 14 when they beat Michigan in the Sugar Bowl? Or Ohio State beat Alabama, not Michigan. Yeah. I said afterward, and I live in the Central Ohio, I didn't care who they played next. I knew they were going to win. They could have played the Patriots maybe and had a chance. But hmm. I, that's how I feel about Michigan. I think the carryover effect is real. I think they're going to take it, and, and I think it'll be close, but, but I like the Wolverines. Will that be the last game that Jim Harbaugh coaches for the Maize and Blue? Well, I mean, how many times can he deflect the question? I mean, he's going to get asked that a bunch of times in a bunch of formats this weekend, and he's going to deflect it every single time. Um, I would say I'm leaning toward yes, just because that extension's been out there. It feels all orchestrated from the standpoint of, Michigan can say, hey, he did everything he could for the program. We did everything we could try to do to keep him. And yet the parachute to Chargers or the Raiders is there. I mean, especially if he wins it. And then 
whatever punishment comes from the NCAA is going to come. And I don't know how severe that will be. I mean, this is just, I think I've made the joke on your show a few times. This is trying to figure out um, the difference between the unpredictability of the NCAA and the unpredictability of Jim Harbaugh. It's like two wrongs make a right almost. That's that's something. Uh, maybe they have to. Maybe they win it all and then have to vacate it. But guess what? We will have all seen it with our eyes. And uh, the the only person that gets punished is the guy that has to rewrite the media guide. Bill, always appreciate your insight. Thanks so much for your time. We'll catch up with you soon. Hey, no problem. Thanks so much for having me on.